Hi guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to show you a couple of things that I got. I discussed them in my other video and I just wanted to show you. Um, I did get a couple new Daniel Smith colors. This one is Ultramarine Violet. I thought it was going to be bluer than this and I'm wondering if I got the wrong color. So I'm going to look at my chart in just a minute. But I also replaced my Mayan Blue Genuine and then I recently also replaced my Hematite Genuine because I ran out of those colors and those were two that I wanted to keep out of my little Primatex set. And I find it, it is very helpful to purchase um, the small little 5 ml tubes if you're not sure what you're going to like. If the price is real similar though, I just go ahead and buy the 15 mls because I figure I'll use it eventually. So um, that's why I bought the larger tube of Ultramarine Violet. But I also got a new aluminum palette. Now this is the aluminum palette that I've had <coughs> that I got early in the summer. It's gotten a little bit banged up, <laughs> but um, it's still still um, works great and I love it and um, it's real dirty right now but this is how big it is and it holds 24 colors I believe 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 26 colors and then I had added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so I had 31 colors in here with these little ones that I had added here and there I don't know if you can even see these ones that I put in the corner. And I just run my brush along them when I need them. This is a really great size travel palette. And I like it a lot. It's only about 8 inches long. Maybe a little bit longer. 8 and a quarter or something like that. Unfortunately, it is made for right-handed people. Because it's got the little opening on the one edge. And the tall lip on the other edge. So me, as a left-hander using it like that, I'd have to put my pull my brush backwards, which is ridiculous to do. So that's my only complaint with this palette, but it is a right-handed world, so I deal with it. <laughs> but anyway, I got a new one to put all of my colors in, and I will have extra room left over. And this one is much bigger. Um, this one will hold 65. It's almost twice as long. I'll show you the difference in just a minute. The only thing I'm having trouble with, and I know it'll loosen up a bit over time, is opening it because I have a messed up joint in my thumb. So I have to kind of open it from the end. But this is what this one looks like. The wells are much bigger. I thought they were going to be the same size and I would have been fine if they were the same size and the palette was, you know, a several inches shorter. But um, for this being a nice uh, palette for like a travel studio palette or whatever, or even when I'm painting in my living room watching TV, I can have all of my colors with me and not have to worry about anything else. But this is the difference in the size of the palettes. I couldn't believe how much difference there was. This one is so itty bitty. They're all, I think they're the same thickness. Uh, this one might just be like a millimeter larger, maybe two millimeters larger, but it's pretty much the same. Um, and then it is so much smaller. That's how much smaller this one is. Amazing, huh? So when I open it, uh, ouch. this is the difference inside. That's how much bigger the other one is. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, isn't it? And these wells are big. These are almost full pan size. I can fit a full pan on top of that. Now, granted, it is shallower, but I don't even care about that because I like to have a little less paint in my wells and fill them more often just because I think the paint stays fresher that way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this one up, and we'll see how it looks once it's all done. It's going to take me a while to get my colors in the order that I would like. Um, I'm thinking I will... I was thinking it'd be nice to have my colors over here and then my most used ones over here, even if I repeated them, but there's not enough pale, um, enough wells to do that. So my cleaning lady's here, so my dog's barking at her. Uh, but anyway, let me go ahead and get started on this and we'll see how it goes. 
Um, now, many of you also have been asking me about Inktober. As you see, I got my Inktober shirt on today. Um, I was going to save it for October 1st, but I decided to wear it today. And um, I just wanted to review again very quickly. This group that I have formed is very informal. It's just basically a place for you to tag your photos on Instagram, and then they will fall into a Sharon Cullen art tag. And if you go on to Instagram and you type in the search box, hashtag Sharon Cullen art, they will all come up. So every day you can check everybody's photos. Just make sure you put a comment in there, what day it is, what you used, um, maybe the kind of paper you're using, if you're using drawing paper, if you're using watercolor paper, like this is the kind of book that I'm going to be using. In fact, I have my book right here for Inktober, and I was going to paint the Inktober thing on the front of it. I did put it inside to get it all ready to go. So I have my Inktober 2017 inside my front page, and then I got ink that ran through to the other side, so I decided to start putting the tools down that I'd be using. So I put a few of them on there, but I'm not finished yet. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got my noodler's ink and, and my, one of my, my pens, my Metro pen that I love so much, a Micron pen, one of my touch markers, um, and then that was bleed through. So I just wanted to get that done and it did bleed through a little bit on the back. I think I must've used ink for that, um, for it to bleed through like that because that has never happened to me before. Yeah, that is ink. But anyway, um, so then I will go ahead and I will use this book for all of Inktober 2017. And then I'm going to put something on the cover. I thought about getting an Inktober sticker. In fact, one of you had asked me where I got my Inktober stickers. And I think what you saw were these stickers on my other book here. And these are, that's a YouTube sticker. And then all of these little ones are doodle and sketch stickers. So, um, I'm blurry today. I don't know why that is, but so if you were wondering about that, you can go to, um, mrjakeparker.com slash inktober and you can look at his, uh, and, um, then slash inktober and you can buy inktober stickers right there if you want to get an inktober sticker to stick on the front of your book. Um, I thought about doing that, but I think for me, I'll just paint it on. I can do it with acrylic paint and it'll be fine. So um, anyway, uh, the other thing was somebody was asking if jelly roll pens were okay to use. You can use whatever you like. This is a very informal thing. Inktober is just, Jake has just said that it is about improving your illustration skills, your drawing skills. He's an illustrator professionally. He does have a YouTube channel, so look for him. Jake Parker, J-A-K-E and P-A-R-K-E-R -E is his last name. Just look him up. He's been doing Inktober videos to get everybody hyped up. He's gone over the rules on his um, channel. It, there's a quick video. It's under two minutes long. You can listen to the rules there. I've already gone over them in one of my videos, but you can use any kind of ink. Or if you want to use a reg, you know, a micron pen or a fountain pen or whatever, and then just use watercolor to fill in, you can do that too. There's no no hard and fast rule over that. You don't have to use color at all. So I'm going to be using a variety of different things. I'm going to try to stick with my inks a little bit more so that I can learn to use them a little bit better and utilize them in my artwork a little bit more. But for today, I am going to go ahead and get this baby filled in and I am really excited about it. So let's get started. Now I went through some of my um, colors the other day and there, I have a ton here in this container. And as I was going through them, I, I don't have 65 Daniel Smith colors. I wish I did. I have about, I don't know, 35 to 40 Daniel Smith colors. And then I have some Rembrandts. I have, I'm going to be using one cotton color, which is my, um, 
Payne's Gray that I'm using up. I've got a big tube of that that I'm trying to get through. And uh, there are some Van Gogh colors in here. I could use the Van Gogh Payne's Gray even. Maybe that's what it was. It's not Cotman. It might be Van Gogh. No, it is Cotman. I have it right here. I'm almost through the tube, but it was a large tube. This tube was 21 ml, so it's taken me a couple of years to get through it. Um, I needed it quick and was not at a store where they sold Daniel Smith colors, so um, I decided to use this. So I'm going to use this up and then um, get it out of the way and I'll start using my Van Gogh. But I'm also going to be using my PWC colors that I got with my Doodle and Sketch um, uh, box this last month. And these are by Shinhan Art, so I'll be using those too. And they are professional colors. I also ran out of cobalt blue, so I'm going to be using my Rembrandt, little Rembrandt cobalt blue that I got for, um, in a, in a uh, box as well, doodle and sketch box. So I'm going to go ahead and what I do is I set all my colors out first on a table and... I put them, I set them up the way that I am used to setting up colors from when I first started out, which may be the wrong way, but they are the way that I like to set up my colors. I don't always set them up in circular order like I would with my, with my um, circular watercolor palette, my Stephen Quiller palette, but um, I set them up the way I like them, so... That's, that's the way it is. I usually do them rainbow order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and earth tones. But most people would set them up with their yellow, green, blues, reds, oranges, and around that way. And you can do them that way too. It's just that I do what I'm used to and I know right where to grab for them on my palette and it's comfortable for me. So that's why I do it. The only reason I'm mentioning that is because I did have a comment from a person telling me how I was doing it wrong and how I should not be teaching people online that way because I am an idiot. So, <laughs> so I am just letting you know, if you're going to set up a palette, I don't care how you do it. Do it any way you like. But if you're going to do it in, in um, color wheel order, you're going to go from your yellows to your greens to your blues, to your purples, to your reds, to your oranges, and back up to your yellows again. Earth tones usually go at the end. Um, and that's how most people will set them up. This is going to be hard to set up right anyway because I'm going to be going up and around or this way around and then down to these. So who knows? I have no clue how I'm going to set it up. So let me just get started with that and then I'm going to flip you around the other way and everybody get going for Inktober. Get your books ready because we are starting next Sunday, is it? October 1st is Sunday. So next Sunday um, we will be ready to go. That's one week from today. So um, I'm getting real excited and I'm glad it's starting on a Sunday because it'll be a little bit easier for me to get it done if I'm feeling well. So um, let me turn around and we'll get this going. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and set all of these out in um, my order that I like. I'm going to set these all aside here, just fill them out, and I'm going to take the ones that I don't use. In fact, some of these I should throw away. So I have 57 colors here. Some of them are almost out and I did decide to use a couple Van Gogh colors, a uh, Cotman color. My uh, phthalo green was a Cotman and this is actually a pretty fine color. For me, who doesn't normally like Cotman colors, some of their intense colors, like their phthalos, are pretty good and um, I, I always prefer paint out of a tube rather than out of a pan because they reconstitute easier for me. There's my Mayan blue, so I already did have it out. I'm going to put this away, get rid of that, 
and my iridescent colors will go last at the end. So now I'm going to just get these in order of the way I want to put them in my palette, which is going to take me another few minutes. And what I do is I try to go cool to warm or warm to cool and try to keep them that way and their intensity of color. And that's how I will put them together. Now, like this Aussie red gold is on the oranger side, so that's going to lean toward my reds. Same with my quinacridone gold, which um, many of you may not be aware, but um, for a while, uh, Daniel Smith, for the last 17 years or so, has um, been... Hang on, let me turn this so you can see me. For the last 17 years or so, um, Daniel Smith has been the only carrier of the uh, quinacridone gold pigment, which is, I think, PO49, or uh, I've got it covered up here. Let me find another one. I know I've got another one, a brand new tube here. And they ran out after 17 years. Um, this is PO49. Yeah, I was right. And it is a beautiful, beautiful color, quinacridone gold. I love quinacridone gold. I always have. But um, you might be able to find it at some art stores, but they're running out quickly because people are buying them up, people who know about that pigment. So um, they have made a new one, which is the same thing that other companies, you say, well, other companies have quinacridone gold. There's plenty to go around. Well, they're making it out of two pigments rather than one pigment. And it's always nice when you can have a color that is a single pigment because then when you're mixing, especially for those of you who are new to mixing color, when something has two or three pigments in it already, and you try to mix it with something else that has two pigments, you've got five pigments all coming together to mix a color. That's why you might find that you have trouble mixing certain colors. Um, not only are you maybe clashing with the warm and the cool, but you're clashing with your pigments that are in the tube. So if you can keep pure single pigment colors, they always work easier. So you'll still be able to get quinacridone gold and it looks virtually the same to the naked eye. Um, it, the differences are so subtle. And I think, was it Sandy Alnock on YouTube did a video on all the golds, the quinacridone golds and golds that match it. Now, I like this Aussie red gold too, and it is very similar to quinacridone gold. In fact, I wonder if it has that pigment in it. No, it's PY83. It basically is just um, diarylide yellow and transparent red oxide. Those are the colors that are in it, which is PR101 and quinacridone red, which is PV19. Um, so you've got three already in this pigment, but they look so similar. So if I was to use one over the other, I would choose quinacridone gold because it's got less pigment in it. It's, it's a purer single pigment right now, the tubes that I have. And this has three pigments in it to get virtually a very similar color. This is a little redder, obviously, but um, there are other examples out there. So if you're, if you're able to stick with a single pigment color, you're doing yourself a big favor um, if you have a choice in the matter, that is. So I'm hanging on to this. Last year I had given uh, a tube of quinacridone gold away to some lucky winner that I never heard from again after the giveaway. I think she lives in Belgium. If you're out there, say hi. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So I've got one tube left, and I'm hanging on to it for dear life. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these in my order, and then I will put them on my palette. And then as I do that, I also write it out on a sheet of paper so that um, I know what order they're in, and then I can do a chart for them. So that's what I'll do. And it takes a little bit.
<laughs> a couple things happened. First of all, I decided to change color order in my blues. And when I did that, I forgot to put, I wanted my phthalo blue and my Prussian blue together. And I think this is my Prussian blue here. And my phthalo blue is over here. So they're far apart and they're very close in color proximity and in, in pigment proximity. So I wish I would have had them together, but that's part of the reason I keep my, um, try not to put way too much pigment in my palette. Some of my colors I was running out of. And then as you saw here, I was screwing around with grays. My Payne's gray, um, this was, this is the Van Gogh Payne's gray and that was the um, Cotman Payne's Gray, and this pigment is much, much stronger. Even if I pick it up and move it over here, it's still stronger. Um, so I decided to use the Van Gogh instead of the Cotman. I got rid of that. I cut my finger open with those caps. The skin came right off of there. That's real great for my, um, for my fingers, but, uh, getting, you know, pigment inside there, some cancer-causing agent. But anyway, so this is the setup I have. Whoops, and I just stuck my finger in this one. There's a couple fugitive pigments on here. I think I have a fugitive violet over here. And of course, opera uh, pink is very fugitive, but I can use it in a sketchbook or whatever, and it'll be fine. Um, and some artists, professionals, will say that they've used it and their work has been fine, but doesn't mean that it's not going to fade in 20 years or something down the road. Who knows? But um, I don't think my stuff will end up in a um, in a museum anyway. <laughs> so who am I fooling? But uh, anyway, uh, the colors are all Daniel Smith except for my cobalt blue, which is a Rembrandt, my oxide brown, which is a Rembrandt. Um, then I have my phthalo green right there, which is a Cotman. And then I have um, my PWC colors. There were four of them. There was the pink, there was a red, um, there's yellow, and uh, one other one. I can't remember. Probably blue. Oh, yeah, peacock blue, which I believe is this one right here. And then the rest, uh, and then my Payne's Gray is uh, um, Van Gogh, and then that's it. And the rest are Daniel Smith. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a chart and get that all done. I have to write my colors down in order before they get pushed out of order, and um, then I can make my chart. So I'm going to write them all down. Thing that I didn't do that I need to do is um, I've written them all down in order this way the rows go on to another row but that's not a big deal I just need to know in order what they are going all the way around so I've got them all done I'm just gonna let these sit open to dry a little bit over the next couple days and I really like this palette. It's really, you know, I was afraid with just only two mi two little mixing areas that it wouldn't be enough, but it really is. And I like that there's room for brushes here, a lot of room for brushes. So I can put brushes there, except I always worry about having my palette tipped the right direction so that I don't bump my tips at the top of the palette because that's not good for brushes. But even my travel brushes I could set in there and that would be just fine. Um, I usually carry my my roll up thing with me anyway. The one thing I was gonna say though, I'm gonna do my um, chart like I always do, but I want to, um, instead of putting my pigments down or their light fast ratings, because I'm getting to know those pretty well, not the pigment numbers per se. I don't memorize all of those, just the common ones I know. But um, I want to know staining or non-staining. Transparent, non-transparent. For the most part, I know. Most of my colors are transparent, except for things like my iridescent colors, uh, the duochrome and that. Um, then my, I think my cobalt, Teal is semi-transparent. My Perinone Orange is semi-transparent. 
my raw sienna is semi-transparent. Um, cerulean blue I'm not real sure about, so I'll have to check that too. But anyway, um, I do want to know staining or non-staining because that makes a big difference when I'm painting. I thought I'd just really quickly compare my, um, my uh, what you call it, my ultramarine blue with my other violets. I mean, my ultramarine violet with my other violets. Now, my ultramarine violet is next to my cobalt violet deep. Okay, so this is my co cobalt violet deep that I've had for years. And I don't use my violets a lot because I mix them, but since I have them in my palette, it's, it's already drying, which is great. And I think the hot lights have something to do with that. Um, this is what that one looks like. It's got more of a reddish reddish hue to it. Um, but it's very pretty. And then this is the ultramarine violet. They look very similar. This is slightly bluer. Um, and that one's slightly redder. Let me just deepen that a little bit so we can see it. I got a poke in there a little bit. Yeah, this one's bluer, that one's redder. Now, I always thought that ultramarine violet <clears throat> was a lot bluer, like, like uh, okay, no, this one is ultramarine blue right here. So if I mix that with my ultramarine violet, that's what I thought it would be, is a lot bluer. Like that. That's what I thought of ultramarine violet looked like, more of a blue violet. So I need to check the chart and see if maybe it was supposed to be like an ultramarine violet deep or blue deep or violet blue or whatever, but I'm going to have to figure that out. So anyway, that was my new color. And then, of course, my kyanite. You guys have all seen my kyanite. I go through that like, or not kyanite, hematite. Um, which is this one right here. This color is kind of weird to lay down when I get it going. It's um, it's just got a weird consistency, but oh my goodness, it is a great granulating color. It's great for roads. If you want little rocks in your road or whatever, um, you can even already kind of see it here. It looks like there's little chunks in it almost. But if you let it dry, you get it real wet and let it dry, it granulates so pretty. And it looks like this granulates too. Or this, I mean my violet, ultramarine violet granulates. You can see the little speckles in it. But um, yeah, so that's another one that I had gotten. And my Mayan blue was another one that I replaced. Here. It's a gorgeous blue color. Isn't it a beautiful blue? And I use that a lot in my water. It's just perfect for Michigan waters anyway. For like the Great Lakes and stuff, that's the color they are. They have a real deep color. Sometimes they'll get a turquoise color, but they're more of a deeper blue like this. Sometimes they turn more of a phthalo green too. If I mix them together, that's more of what the Great Lakes looks like. But anyway, that's it. So remember everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.